This year, we've had a gaggle of new OLED monitors come busting through our walls and jump scaring us with insane image quality by finally allowing PC gamers to get per pixel local dimming, HDR, super fast response times, and higher refresh rates, pushing the envelope of what our eyes can handle. But many people are asking the question, should I smack down my hard-earned clams on a 4K 240Hz OLED or a 360Hz 1440p OLED monitor? Well, today, I'm gonna try and help you answer that question by first starting off with the most important metric aside from the price, which believe me, we'll touch on that later. But anywho, Let's first go over clarity. Now, thankfully, both monitors do come with a glossy coating, meaning unless you're using an LG OLED TV right now, you're likely to get a large jump in clarity and vibrancy by moving off a typical grainy matte coating to these new OLED coatings, but there is a massive difference in resolution, which will lead to the 4K option being much much more clear. 1440p is actually 2560 by 1440 or 3,686,400 pixels, whereas 4K is 3840 by 2160 or 8,294,400 pixels, a difference of 2.25x more pixels in favor of the 4K option. And as you can imagine, this leads to an enormous increase in clarity, allowing you to see details in games and movies, which may be completely invisible at 1440p, like high resolution textures, as well as greatly reducing aliasing in games, meaning that if clarity is your chief concern, you're likely going to want to choose a 4K display, but keep in mind it does come at the cost of performance, which we'll touch on later. Of course, there is a lot more to monitors than just clarity though, which brings me to the next factor gamers should consider, speed. Now, 360 hertz versus 240 hertz on paper is a massive difference of 50% in favor of 1440p 360 hertz over the 4K 240 option, but in practice, it's not so simple, fellas. In terms of latency, 240 hertz is just 4.17 milliseconds, whereas 360 hertz has a latency of 2.78 milliseconds, or a difference of just 1.39 milliseconds. Now, 1.39 milliseconds is gonna be noticeable to some, but I would say it's not gonna be that significant. And in fact, simply by setting NVIDIA control panel settings, correctly, you can shave off around 10 milliseconds. So in terms of speed, this isn't going to turn you into a G Fuel boofing pro gamer. However, there's more to refresh rate than speed. There's also motion clarity. And as you can see here in this motion performance test at 360 hertz, this monitor is going to be more clear. But once again, it's not a huge improvement. And I think while higher refresh rates are always nice, and I'd love to see a thousand hertz on all monitors one day, it's unlikely to bring you from bronze to pro in your favorite game. But wait a minute, we got to talk about performance because as as many will point out, 4K 240Hz is much harder to achieve than 1440p 360Hz. In fact, doing some simple math, it would be around 50% harder to run than 1440p 360Hz if you're GPU bound. And I think that's important to consider because, for example, in a game like the finals, I'm currently CPU bound at around 200 frames per second on a 7800X3D currently the fastest gaming CPU on the planet, so this could be highly dependent on the games you play, as in my case, in this one game, I would get the same frame rate at 1440p roughly as I would get at 4K, making it the wrong choice for that game. However, there are many games where that is not the case. But finally, we gotta talk about the price. Now with the 360Hz 1440p QD OLED monitors, they can typically be found for around $750 to $800 for the better value options, making them, well, a lot cheaper than the 4K 240Hz options, which can range anywhere from $900 to $1,300. Now, if you're deciding between an $800 1440p or $900 4K monitor, I'd say the jump in resolution would be a big enough factor for most to spend the extra 12.5% for the 2.25 times higher resolution, but most available 4K options will be north of $1,000, making the decision a bit more difficult. So overall, which monitor is best? Well, 
For 1440p 360Hz, its advantages are speed, motion, performance, and price. However, with the 4K 240Hz, its advantage is clarity. And with so many advantages, you'd think that 1440p has got to be the clear winner, but I would argue the opposite. Yes, technically 1440p 360Hz has more advantages, but like we discussed with speed and latency, those advantages are very, very small, and the clarity advantage for 4K is enormous. For that reason, I think most gamers would be better off spending more to grab the 4K option if it's within your budget, as not just gaming, but everything you do from watching movies to working will get the massive resolution and clarity advantage, as well as less noticeable fringing that comes with 4K. And after reviewing both options many times, personally, I would hands down prefer 4K 240Hz over 1440p 360Hz, but at a higher price and higher performance performance requirement, this won't always be the best choice for everyone. So I'll have affiliate links to the best 4K 240Hz and 1440p 360Hz QD OLEDs I've reviewed so far in the description below, and I would highly recommend either option as they're both excellent. But what option do you think is better? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and be sure to get subscribed for everything display related here on the Display Guy. Whether you're looking to connect a new console, gaming PC, or just need a fast and reliable HDMI cable to connect over long distances, Rupert has you covered with their certified 8K HDMI 2.1 fiber optic cable available in sizes of up to 50 feet and can deliver a perfect full 48 gigabits per second connection over distances other cables could only dream of reaching. And with 48 gigabits per second of bandwidth, it can easily drive 8K 60 FPS or 4K 144 FPS 10-bit HDR video through its ultra-thin flexible and durable housing, and it even supports ER. So if you're in the market for a cable that can drive a beautiful new TV or monitor, be sure to check out RuPro on Amazon today.